Hi, everyone. How are you doing? The meeting is going to begin in a few minutes. And uh, we encourage anyone joining via Zoom to just take this short survey that you can say here displayed on your screen. There's a QR code to the left. Then we also have the link on the right side. And for everyone that's joining tonight, just please note that we have live captioning available and American Sign Language interpretation for anyone who joined. So our ASL interpreter will be visible in a speaker window that you should be able to see on your screen throughout the presentation. And to turn on captions, just look for the CC button on the bottom of your screen in the screen in the Zoom settings menu. If you have any questions about meeting accessibility, please use the chat function and we will do our best to address any concerns that you have. Thank you. Okay, so welcome everyone. My name is Nick Fasano. I'm the Assistant Director of Government and Community Relations at the MTA Long Island Railroad. And welcome to tonight's public virtual meeting on Long Island Railroad service to Grand Central Madison. So just as background, uh, the draft timetables were released on June 2nd and they're available on our project page and the MTA website. And the goal of this meeting and the, the previous meetings of which there were four, is to make sure that everyone understands all the new service and the changes that are going to come towards the end of this year when we open up the new terminal at Grand Central Madison and also talk about everything that the new terminal has to offer. So tonight's section is going to be recorded and available on our website. And as I said, this is our fifth public session. And prior to this session, we had three public information sessions where it was myself, um, a couple of subject matter experts from the Long Island Railroad, MTA c &D, MTA headquarters, talking about different aspects of the project and about the service that was going to be offered. So if you're interested in seeing any of those presentations, you can go to this pro the project website, which is here and displayed on your screen, and all three of those are available there. We also had one uh, public comment forum or meeting, which this is the same as that, where the members of the public get a chance to comment on the proposed service, the terminal, and everything um, in that regard. So before we begin that, I just wanted to let everyone know that we're going to have a few remarks from uh, Kathy Rinaldi, who is the president of Metro North and also the interim president of Long Island Railroad. And she's going to speak to you about, you know, the transformative nature of the service, about how it's going to connect Long Island Railroad, Metro North, and just what it means for the region as a whole now that um, both of these railroads are going to be in the same terminal together. And I um, just want to remind everyone that, you know, this is really the beginning of our, uh, our public outreach on this project. Uh, you know, we've had a couple of meetings now and we're having meetings in the future and we're just going to continue to engage with the public. And, you know, we're here for any questions or concerns that you have. So, um, you know, we're very grateful that you came out and that you want to learn more. So please feel free to stay engaged. And Kathy, I'll take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. And good evening, everybody. As Nick said, I'm Kathy Rinaldi. I'm the interim president of the Long Island Railroad and president of Metro North. And I'm happy to be here tonight in the fifth public session that we've had on the recently announced Grand Central Madison draft schedules. Excuse me. That's a point of emphasis. These are draft schedules and we are listening. While there are physical limitations based on our infrastructure, there is the potential for schedules to be adjusted. And we will also continue to push for, for those infrastructure needs with previously reluctant municipal governments that will benefit Long Island Railroad customers. But tonight, I wanna to talk about the myriad benefits that this transformative project will deliver to Long Islanders. This is a fantastic and exciting time for the Long Island Railroad, and it's an honor for me to be leading the Long Island Railroad. It is a time when massive transformational projects that have long been promised are about to come to reality. Constraints that have long put a ceiling on how much service the Long Island Railroad can operate are falling away as we bring online two long-awaited mega projects that are designed to improve Long Islanders' commutes and make Long Island a more competitive business destination. Mainline third track, which will be activated in segments throughout this year, 
and service to Long Island Railroad's new terminal at Grand Central scheduled to begin by the end of 2022. The draft timetables that were released in June give definition to the magnitude of the service increases that both Third Track and Grand Central Madison service will unlock. The release of these timetables has also allowed customers to start thinking about what their travel might look like after they have the option to take the train to Grand Central Madison. There is no railroad or public transportation system in America that is getting bigger service increases than the Long Island Railroad will be getting in a few short months. In one stroke, the Long Island Railroad is increasing service by 40%. This is a staggering number for a system that normally adjusts by a percentage point or two during a routine schedule update. The number of morning rush hour trains into Manhattan will increase by 58% from 76 to 120. The number of afternoon rush hour trains from Manhattan to Long Island will increase from 98 trains to 158 trains. And the number of reverse commute trains will increase by 65% from 81 to 134. The opening of Grand Central Madison later this year will provide a permanent home for the Long Island Railroad of Manhattan that is not shared with any other operations. The Long Island Railroad and Metro North train operations in the terminal are completely separate, and a delay or incident on one railroad should not spill over into the other railroad. Having robust service into a second Manhattan terminal allows for operations to continue in the event of any sort of disruption at Penn and will minimize the disruptions that will result from Amtrak's East River Tunnel replacement project, which is scheduled to begin in early 2024 and could take more than three years to complete. The proposed schedules that we will be releasing accommodate this Amtrak work, so there will not be a need to reduce service when the work begins in a couple of years. For those Long Islanders who work on the east side, taking the train to Grand Central Madison will reduce their commutes by up to 40 minutes per day. Taken together with the third track project, the opening of Grand Central Madison will also enable robust reverse peak commute opportunities, opening up jobs on Long Island to New York City residents in a big new way for the first time. And the importance of the connectivity between the two railroads cannot be overstated. The ability to use Grand Central as a transfer point between the two railroads all of a sudden makes it possible for businesses in Queens and Long Island to attract prospective employees from the Bronx and points north. This interconnectivity between the railroads allows for greater discretionary and leisure travel between the two systems, attracting Westchester residents to Long Island beaches and wineries in the summer and Long Island residents to Hudson Valley hiking destinations in the fall. For those of you who continue to use Penn Station, it means a less crowded experience with something like 50% of Long Island Railroad riders expected to shift their travel patterns over to Grand Central Madison. I wanna thank you all for joining us here tonight. And now I'm gonna turn it back over to Nick to begin the public comment period. Great, thank you, Kathy. Um, so yeah, as Kathy said, now we're gonna begin the public comment portion of tonight's meeting. So I'm gonna call people in the order they were registered and when you guys join as you are now you're all muted but when your name is called please make sure that your microphone is on and your camera is on um second thing if you don't want to be on camera that's also totally fine it's really not a big deal um you're going to see a brief transition and we're, we're also going to see the same thing as we elevate you into a speaking role so uh, just you know don't be alarmed at that and just just uh you know bear with us on that and when you begin speaking just please uh, state your name and any affiliation that you have that you wish to disclose so it's on the record for us and also please 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 so that everyone's fair to all the speakers that have registered um we just ask that you try to uh, limit your remarks to two minutes um so you're going to have a clock on the screen that will indicate how much time you have remaining and then a warning light and a beeple sound when you have 30 seconds left so that you know to conclude your remarks and i i will also provide a um just a reminder as well so also just a reminder if, if you registered to speak tonight if you but you joined under a different name we just please let us know in the q a so we can make sure that we get to you um and if anyone is on that we miss or don't call please let us know in the q a as well so that we can get you when we um are towards the end of our speakers and I am just going to also, um, you know, for submitting comments, this is great right here in case something comes up in the, um, you know, in addition to speaking tonight, or you see something that you want to bring to our attention, or you want to share something, this link right here, um, which is HTTPS colon backslash backslash MTA dash NYC dot cust help dot com slash app slash meeting slash com slash comment. 
<laughs> slash H underscore ID uh, dash one, three, one. So you can see how much I practice that. Um, so um, I'll also put this in the chat once I'm done speaking. And we encourage you all to visit the project page, which I will also share with you so that you can learn more about the schedules in the terminal there. And finally, um, MTA subject matter experts are, are here. So if you have any questions that come up, please feel free to use the Q&A. Um, and yeah, that's it. So we are gonna begin the public comment portion and we are gonna start out um, with assembly member Gina Solidi followed by Ariana Porosco. Thank you very much. All right, good evening. Uh, my name is Gina Solidi. I am the New York State Assemblywoman uh, that represents the entirety of the Port Washington branch in Nassau County. Uh, after the July 13th meeting that reached full capacity, um, I want to thank the MTA for hosting these additional meetings to make sure, you know, our constituent voices are heard. Uh, and like that meeting on July 13th, tonight you'll hear many of those same concerns about the proposed schedule changes. Uh, concerns that I hope you will not ignore. Uh, and to every resident here to speak and to watch tonight's public hearing, thank you. It's important to tell your personal story and for the Long Island Railroad to hear how these changes will affect you, your family, and our community. And these are stories the MTA must not ignore. Uh, over the past six weeks, I've been going to the trains to speak with commuters directly. I've now received over 3,100 responses uh, to the ridership survey about the proposed changes, overwhelmingly opposed. Uh, so to every person who filled out the survey, who spoke with me on their way to work, I hear you. And tonight, the MTA hears you. The promise of Eastside access is almost here. It's very exciting. But the decades it took, the billions it cost, it was always supported in the hopes of a better and more efficient commute. But the proposed schedule falls short of that promise for the Port Washington branch. But we still have time to fix it. So please continue to listen to your writers tonight and hear their concerns. Thank you so much for this opportunity to speak. Thank you, assembly member. So next we're gonna have Ariana Parasco followed by Jean Tien. And also if I mispronounce anyone's name, I do apologize. So Ariana, you're up. Oh, great. I was muted that whole time. That's fantastic. All right, let me start again. Sorry. Ariana Parasco, Port Washington resident. I ask again tonight, why do I continue to read in the press about the 70% increase in service? It's honestly offensive at this point. We're, we're the, why are we the only stop seeing a seven minute increase in commute time to the city when every other branch on the island has essentially either maintained or even gone down a commute time? Everyone makes mistakes, right? I don't understand why the MTA at this point just can't publicly acknowledge that this was a major blunder and that it should and will be corrected. I don't understand why the LIRR won't release and discuss ridership data on the branch. Again, if we followed the data, I think you wouldn't be leaving the residents of Great Neck, Manhasset, and Port Washington in such a predicament. There's honestly been zero transparency with the public I personally feel zero accountability, and it's really disgraceful to watch. Your loyal paying customers deserve way more. Every time I look at this proposed schedule, I'm really dumbfounded. There's literally one train I can take to get to work on time, one train, and I don't see how this can work truly, truly. The overcrowding, the one station an hour during rush hour with extra stops is going to be absolute chaos. 
And I don't know how you're extrapolating that stations will be less crowded during peak commuting hours when, you know, during rush hour, there's far less train options by station during peak travel times to get to work by 9 a.m. I'm at this point where I'm really starting to consider other commuting options if this becomes a reality because my choices are so limited as a working parent and I have to balance this schedule with child care. And you're really putting parents between a rock and a hard place. And I am truly saying that with all honesty. And I hope you really think about that more than anything. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Ariana. Um, next, we're gonna have Jean Tien followed by Ian Rasmussen. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for your time today. My name is Jean Tian. I am a resident of Great Neck. First, I'd like to thank everybody for your time tonight to hear our concerns. Um, I have heard everything that was shared already, and I do agree with the previous residents' concerns. What I'd also like to highlight is, you know, to, to offer a differing view to what was offered in the beginning. First, one of the benefits that was offered with the extension of the Long Island Railroad um, uh, transportation to Grand Central was that it would improve Long Island's commutes. Now, unfortunately, while that may be true for some, it certainly is not true for the, for the residents who take the Port Washington line to work. Um, the second benefit that was also mentioned, or one of the benefits that was also mentioned, that it would reduce our commute by 40 minutes a day. Now, again, this is something where the Port Washington um, residents, uh, the line, the residents who use the Port Washington line will not experience this level of commute. One of the main reasons that we had actually moved to Great Neck was because we were so in love with the Long Island Railroad train station that was being offered from Port Washington into the city. As a working parent with two little kids at home, it was one of the main benefits that allowed me to be a working mom, but still be able to take care of my family and to get to work on time and to get home at a reasonable hour to, to be there for my children. Now, in looking at the proposed schedule, there is a material uh, reduction of trains and service for those individuals who live in Great Neck and rely on the Long Island Railroad to get to work. That said, there's a material increase in benefits for those who live um, outside of Great Neck from Queens on out. Great Neck, the one thing I will say is that the prior resident in Port Neck had actually said that they would have to co uh, consider other commuting options. For individuals like myself, we don't have other commuting options. The Long Island Railroad is our only commuting option. And then so to take away the express trains reduces any of our other commuting options, adding more time and stress and frustration that it takes for us to actually Please get to your remarks. Um, so I'd really like for everybody to really consider, reconsider the, uh, the removal of the express train lines and to reestablish more train service for uh, the Port Washington train station um, for Great Neck and Port Washington residents. Thank you. Thank you. So just a friendly reminder, everyone, please try to keep your remarks to two minutes. Um, so next we're going to have Ian Rasmussen followed by Seth, Seth Zuckerman. Ian? Uh, good evening. My name is Ian Rasmussen. I am a Port Washington resident and commuter, and as you'll see in my background, uh, a proud former qualified conductor on the Long Island Railroad. Uh, I want to echo some of President Rinaldi's statements uh, at the start. Um, this railroad is, is almost without peers even today, and after a 40% increase in the number of trains and one hopes the number of passengers traveling on the railroad, it, it will essentially be without peers in, in North America. And that's really the source of my pride as a former conductor. But I, I actually want to talk about something different, which is the revised ridership projections we saw from McKinsey this week. And I assume everybody on the railroad side of this table uh, knows what I'm talking about. Um, and they were daunting to say the least, at, you know, at worst, an existential threat to a, the railroad. Um, but what I found most shocking was that when I read through 
what McKinsey calls the drivers of change that would potentially have people not return to the railroad. They followed almost point by point my conversations with other commuters and residents in my town. That is, if my express trains don't run anymore, I'll just work from home more often. If the express trains aren't running, I can just drive to work if I need to. If the trains are going to take longer or they're going to go to different stations, maybe we'll go to an Islanders game instead of a Knicks game. So the real threat here when people's commute times increase is that we are driving people into the future that we're also terrified of right now as we are watching uh, you know, ridership return at a slower rate than had been anticipated. Um, it's fortunate actually that the Port Washington branch, indeed just the stations from Great Neck to Port Washington are the only ones that have received a treatment like this in the draft timetables. So I hope that you'll hear us all out and simply revise the schedule to restore the travel times to those four stations. Otherwise, I could not be more excited to welcome Eastside Access at the end of the year. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. So next we have Seth Zuckerman followed by Jared Raskin. Good evening, everyone. My name is Seth Zuckerman. I am a fellow Port Washington resident like the prior speakers. And I take the Long Island Railroad into Penn Station five days a week, sometimes up to seven days a week. Now, these proposed changes that you've had will impact the quality of my life for multiple reasons. I will get to spend less time with my kids every day as they're no longer express trains. My wife and I are both working parents and every minute I get to spend with my kids more is it their quality of life. I now take a train in the morning that takes 34 minutes to get into Penn Station. Under the proposed schedule, my commute will go up to 43 minutes, a nine minute increase, which is completely unacceptable. At night, I take a train, which is 37 minutes. Under the proposed schedule, my commute would go up to 42 minutes, which is another five minute increase. So that's 14 minutes of my day I will not get back to spend with my children. You claim that service will be more reliable, but I don't know how you can make that claim. I don't know what has been done that makes the trains more dependable under these changes. There are so many less trains for me to take into Penn Station. There are only half the amount of trains. Not sure if you've looked at the specifics of the schedule, but in the 7 a.m. hour into Penn Station, there are now only two trains under your proposed schedule, a 7.05 and a 7.45. That's a 40 minute gap between trains and rush hour. So if I miss the train by one minute, I have to wait 40 minutes. In the 8 a.m. hour into Penn Station, there was only one train, an 824, and then there's a 42-minute gap to the next train. There are going to be three trains running from Port Washington into Penn Station between 7 and 9 a.m. That is completely unacceptable. I know President Rinaldi said there's a 58% increase in trains, but that's actually – that's just a lie because now we're going from six trains between the seven and 9 a.m. hour to three. And the same thing happens in the PA hour. To say that there's an increase in service is just false. And this is a huge decrease in service. And we ask that you please stop claiming otherwise. We hope you will reconsider the Port Washington timetables. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Seth. So next we have Jared Raskin followed by Alvina Lowe. Jared, you're muted, just as an FYI. Hi. Hi, my name is Jared Raskin. Uh, like most people, my local station is Port Washington. I was excited about having the option of access to Grand Central Madison, uh, but I'm obviously frustrated after seeing the schedule. After spending $11 billion over 15 years or however long it was, I never imagined the commute would get significantly worse. I mean, there are trains that go over 200 miles per hour these days. Um, Seth, the previous speaker, actually used a very similar example to what I'm about to say. Uh, 9 a.m. is the most common office start time for people. Currently, there's an 8.08 train to Penn that is five stops and 34 minutes long. With a new schedule, if you want to go to Grand Central Madison, one would have to take a 7.45 train to get to work at 9 a.m. That's 23 minutes earlier to get there at the same time. It's a 50-minute train with 12 stops and a train switch, which opens you up to even more potential delays. The majority of people moved here specifically for the train. I know this isn't the forum for this, but I would love to just have a better understanding of why the service is so much worse for Port Washington. Um, I hope everyone could come up with a better solution. Okay, thank you, Jared. 
So next we'll have Alvina Lowe, followed by Jody Feld. Hi, my name is Avina Lowe, and I'm a 14-year resident of Great Neck. My family and I moved here from Manhattan to raise our family, knowing that the commute would be a critical part of our lives. My husband and I both commute daily into Manhattan for work, and we specifically chose Great Neck, not Manhattan, not Port Washington, because of the frequency of the train and the express nature of the trains in Great Neck. In fact, we specifically purchased the home within the walking distance of the train station. That is how important the commute is. And since that move 14 years ago, we continue to enjoy living in Great Neck despite the high taxes and the rising LIR fares in reliance of the frequency and expense nature of the trains. And even throughout the pandemic, we continue to commute to work using the train. My husband's a physician, he's an essential worker, and he needs the train to get to work to save lives. And I echo everything that's been said so far, specifically the difficulty of working parents in spending time with our family and maintaining a professional life and supporting the economy. And I would just like to offer one more point for consideration. The subway is not safe. And as an Asian American woman, it really is not safe. And to now have the gaps as proposed on the new line, that means that now I have to take the, probably possibly take a subway across town more or wait in the station longer which makes me very uneasy. The LIR portion of my commute is my safe zone every single day. And I believe the MTA has a responsibility to ensure that all of their riders feel safe while utilizing your service. I cannot carry another pepper spray. I cannot take another more self-defense class. I simply cannot carry another whistle. The LIR portion of my commute daily is my safe zone. And I believe that this has a disparate impact to the Asian American community, many of whom live in Great Neck. And I do appreciate the balancing act that you all have, the difficulties in meeting the needs of all of your ridership while balancing the budget and the logistics involved. But I would just submit to you that beyond the numbers that you see, beyond what is on the timetable, there are real fears and real lives that are being impacted. Thank you. Thank you, Alvina. So next we have Jody Feld, followed by Noah Steinberg. Do you see me? Am I on? We hear you. You don't have to have your camera on if you don't want. I thought I had my camera on. Give me a second. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hi, my name is Jody Feld. I've been commuting for 35 years on the Port Washington branch. I commute to the Wall Street area approximately an hour and a half each way on a good day. I've dealt with delays, construction, overcrowding, cancellations, all kinds of issues on the railroad. I want you to know that I do applaud all the work that I'm sure all of you and everyone at the MTA has put into figuring out these new schedules, but I have to say that I agree with everyone else who has spoken before me. I'm 64 years old and on the other end of the spectrum, but I plan to work for many more years. I have to say that after seeing the proposed schedules, I'm considering retiring sooner than I would have wanted. I'm very concerned about the changes and there's some big issues. I'm concerned about the train schedule being split between Penn and Grand Central, which reduces the rush hour trains to once or twice an hour to either terminal. There's overall, there's a material difference in the number of trains that will be available to us on this line. On the way home, if a train is missed because your subway is a little off, you would have to wait an hour for another train. That's just simply unacceptable. But my biggest concern is the loss of the express trains for seemingly no reason. I do understand the need for the Woodside stop, but adding six or eight or 10 minutes each way to a commute to accommodate the other additional stops might not seem a lot to other people, but it's a lot to those of us that commute every day and who already deal with a highly unpredictable Long Island Railroad. 
Not only does it add considerable time to our commutes, but it will contribute to significant overcrowding on trains that are already packed to capacity with only four stops. I strongly urge the MTA to reconsider the Port Washington timetables and the loss of the express trains. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. So next we're gonna have Noah Steinberg followed by Cheryl Moyne. Hi, Noah Steinberg speaking. Um, I'm actually rushing right now to uh, get my train to Great Neck. I'm a Great Neck resident, uh, taking the 642 train. Um, I'm gonna echo the comments from uh, previous, call, pre previous speakers. Uh, I look at the schedule, you're reducing um, critical trains. We're not, you're, you're reducing critical uh, trains during critical times of the commute. I don't know what type of analysis was done to come to that conclusion, but uh, the Port Washington line, Great Neck specifically, is not benefiting from, from the uh, east side service. If anything, you should be adding trains. I think the 642 train these days, because you removed the 701 express train that I used to take home every day. Um, and I'm taking a 642 train, and I'll be standing the whole time because nobody ever has a seat. There's not enough trains going in to uh, Penn Station as it is. And now you're removing trains um, and removing the, some of the express trains that uh, we all rely on. So please reconsider, please do the proper analysis. The Port Washington uh, line is not benefiting, Green Neck is not benefiting, and uh, I wish it was different. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Noah. Um, okay, so now we're gonna have Cheryl Moyne followed by Amy Greenholz. Can you see me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, I'm sitting in my office right now, and I've been a commuter uh, to lower Manhattan. I take the railroad and a subway to get to work, and it takes me a good hour and 20 minutes every day from Great Neck. I've already posted my comments and a question. Uh, I think that the proposed uh, changes are startling and detrimental on every level where our communities are being encouraged uh, to return to work in Manhattan, to return to the theater and other cultural events and venues. We've gone from five to six trains to Penn Station pre-COVID, uh, an, an hour, to a proposal that only one train an hour during rush hour will go to Penn Station. Is this progress? I don't think so. The diminishment in service and expungement uh, of the express trains casts Great Neck as the stepchild of the transit system. That's my opinion. And for those who have to trans transfer to a subway or a bus service, our commute will be uh, even longer. There will be missed contacts and connections. And if we miss a train at Penn Station, we have to wait an hour there. So I would urge you to reconsider this uh, terrible alteration in, in the new schedule. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Okay, so we have Amy Greenholz followed by Judy Epstein. Good evening. My name is Amy Greenholz and I'm a resident of Port Washington. I've been a commuter on the Port Washington line for the past 24 years. I will comment on the proposed schedule changes that negatively impact this line in particular. As many have stated, one of the primary reasons we moved to this town in 1998 was due to the train line. While I understand that some changes are needed with the additional Grand Central access, you need to be truthful with your customers and say what you're really doing with these changes, which is reducing service to Penn Station on the Port Washington line especially, and not others. The personal impact to me will be less time that I can spend with my family. And we all know that this is time that you can't get back and goes by way too quickly. What concerns me even more than the longer commute, honestly, is the reality of the overcrowding on the fewer trains east and westbound as more people return to offices in Manhattan and trains make more stops. 
by reducing the number of trains into Penn Station during rush hour, people will push to get on overcrowded trains, especially in Queens. And this will put passengers and crew not only in an uncomfortable position, but in a dangerous one as well. There were many times pre-pandemic when it was nearly impossible to get on an eastbound train in the evening rush hour at Woodside. And more than once, I witnessed injuries due to people pushing and shoving. I also noticed a lack of fare collection. Overcrowding will likely increase the injuries and illness rates, as well as lead to lower revenue. In closing, I urge the MTA, the Long Island Railroad, to reconsider the draft schedules, especially the reduction in service to Penn Station that disproportionately negatively impacts the Port Washington line. I urge our local officials to make it a priority to work together and develop a fair and equitable solution across all train lines. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Amy. So next up, we're going to have Judy Epstein, followed by Heather Vogel. Hi, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, Judy Epstein, I live in Port Washington, where I've lived since my husband and I bought a home here in 1992. And I just wanna show you, I'm kind of old school. I took all the schedules and did it by hand so I could be sure what I was talking about. One very large factor in our decision to buy a home here was the train. We heard that there were two trains an hour to Port Washington. The line was the best. It was only 39 minutes or something like that for the uh, express train and uh, still something like only 45 minutes for the non-express train. I, we even before we signed on our house, with, I walked, I timed my walk from the house to the train station. That's how important every minute and every second was. Now, I'm in, I, my children are grown. I'm concerned with property value when we need to sell this house. This town counted on these trains. People bought homes here rather than in Westchester and started, raised families, started businesses, all on the basis of service that the Long Island Railroad is now doing away with. You're sending half our trains to the east side access. I do not believe half of the current passengers are going to want that. If I had wanted, access to the east side, I would be living in Westchester and I would be on this Zoom going, what's all the fuss about? These new schedules are a gross disservice to people in Port Washington who have been your loyal customers for a hundred years. And I would like you to remember the old song, make new friends or customers, but keep the old. One is silver, but the other is gold. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Judy. So now we're gonna have Heather Vogel followed by David Sutton. Heather, you're uh, muted. So if you could unmute that. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Um, hi, I am Heather Vogel, also from the Port Washington line, and I had a bit of a different perspective than the other uh, speakers have had so far. I work from home currently, and I need to access the train to go to the city in the evenings sometimes, and I wanted to address the proposed removal of the 523 p.m. express train. Uh, from Port Washington to New York City. It's proposed to be replaced with a 502 train and also um, I believe it's a 527 train to Grand Central. And for those of us who like to go to the theater in the evenings, and there are seven o'clock curtains every weeknight for most shows, that's a, a big inconvenience. And coming off the heels of Broadway and live theater being closed for 18 months and they're still struggling to get back up and running. I think that's just a disservice to those of us who like to support the theater community and the arts. If I look at the playbill schedule 
right now. Um, I see 20 Broadway shows with 7 p.m. curtains. That's 100% of the shows listed on there. And that doesn't even consider the off-Broadway and off-off Broadway shows as well. On top of that, um, if you're proposing a 502 departure from Port Washington, that's also not feasible because most of the day commuters aren't back yet. But with the 523 departure, a lot of them are back and there is parking and it's not chaos trying to find spots. I also want to say it works well for start times at City Field as well as for the National Tennis Center as well. Okay, great. Thank you, Heather. Um, next, we're going to have David Sutton, followed by Gabriel Mares, Mares Dom. If I pronounce your name again, I, uh, wrong, I, I apologize. There, um, start the video. Sorry. Now. Okay, there. Hopefully it's working. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Yep. Okay. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to, I looked at the schedules. I live in Great Neck. I've lived in Great Neck since 1999. I'm a physician. I work at Bellevue in New York City. So I go to Penn Station and I usually walk across. I, the clinic starts at nine, therefore the train I catch is the 747. Now the train I catch is gonna have to be the 727 and that's gonna go to Grand Central. No big deal difference, but just in terms of Penn Station versus Grand Central. But just taking the extra 20 minutes that I've got to add to my day, multiply that just for the morning commute by five is 100 minutes. Multiplied by four weeks is about six hours a month, is about 72 hours a year. Just for my change in my morning commute is going to be equivalent to about 72 hours a year onto my commuting time. Beside the fact that the evening commutes don't make much sense, if I miss the 420 at Penn Station. I then have to wait till at least 5.07 to get the next one. So I, I just, I, I hope that this was just an oversight by the MTA rather than, uh, you know, th this was rather sad to see um, that the amount of times that are being added on and the lack of most people, as people have said, need to get to work by nine and I don't want to run out of my time, thank you, but please, please reconsider the schedules and put back some express trains and more trains between 7.30 and 8.15 leaving from the outer parts of Long Island, i.e. Great Neck, Port Washington. Thank you. Great, thank you, David. So next we're gonna have Gabriel Merzadeh and then we're gonna have Andy Pollock. Hi, I just wanted to make sure you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Great, thank you. This is uh, Gabriel Merzadeh. Um, thank you for giving us this time to express our concerns. Um, I echo the comments made by others, like many others who spoke. Uh, when we were looking to purchase a home here, the train service was of utmost importance to us. I'm on the Great Neck Line. We also clocked our walk to the station like one of the other um, uh, participants stated, uh, we do have concerns uh, about childcare, timing, spending time with our family. So all of those I share, property values, all of these concerns are valid. I do wanna add another nuance for, for you to take into consideration. Although many people have begun to work remotely and have been able to continue to maintain that type of work, there are many professional firms who are forcing their employees to the office. At the same time, while in the office, we are interacting with other counterparties who have the luxury of working from home. And the dynamic it's created is we now have earlier conference calls, earlier meetings, sometimes at 7 a.m., believe it or not, with international calls. 8 a.m. is becoming a regular start time for people locally in New York. So here we are in a scenario where myself and my wife are competing with other employees and other firms where we are forced to be in the office earlier than usual. 
the last thing we wanted to add to get added to our concern and our headaches is to not have to worry about a changing in train schedule and have to leave the house even earlier to meet those demands, to stay competitive, and to ensure that we maintain our jobs. Uh, so uh, I really hope this is taken into consideration. Again, I echo all the other sentiments expressed about the various factors. So I don't wanna spend time on that, not to minimize it. I agree with it wholeheartedly, but I just wanted to add this additional dynamic for you to take into consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. So next we're gonna have Andy Pollock followed by Susan Lopotkin. Good evening, this is Andy Pollock from Passengers United. So excuse the uh, background, I didn't even realize that was there, but well, I'm going to talk to everyone tonight about two specific lines in the Long Island Railroad. First, the Port Washington. I am hoping that the Long Island Railroad will listen to the residents' concerns and make a compromise for having express trains on the Port Washington branch for morning and evening service. This would be a huge benefit to riders along the Port Washington branch. I am very concerned about hearing that there's only going to be three trains in the morning. Uh, that doesn't add up in my book. So I'm hoping that residents along the North Shore communities will have their voices heard, especially because from what I've been seeing this evening, that's a very important concern for them. And my last point tonight is about the Long Island Railroad main line. It has been brought to Passengers United's attention that recently two trains on the Ron Conkama line from Penn Station have been running express to Mineola. This is a very good start to get people to return back to the main line. But let's expand on that. And let's also have this available at Grand Central Madison beginning in December, because I'm looking at the current draft schedules and I am not seeing that at all. So hopefully that can be reevaluated because then we can get more people back on the main line. It will be a great incentive for people to know that you'll have that one trip seat from Penn Station Express all the way to Mineola and the same would go around for Grand Central beginning in December. So that's how I'm going to conclude my remarks for this evening. Thank you for the opportunity to let me speak to you all tonight. Thank you, Andy. So next we're going to have Susan Lapotkin, followed by Anthony Marangiello. Okay, sorry about that. Um, my name is Susan Lopatkin. I'm the mayor of the village of Kensington and past president of the Great Neck Village Officials Association. Like everyone here tonight, I'm here to tell you that the proposed changes to the railroad schedule are onerous and unacceptable to the entire Great Neck community. Contrary to the MTA public relations sound bites, which tout the improvements for all railroad riders, this is utterly untrue with respect to the Great Neck train service. Your proposed changes both increase travel time to New York City and reduce the number of trains during peak times. There is no way to sugarcoat this fact. Worst of all, express service to the city from Great Neck has been eliminated, a feature that has existed for over 100 years. Besides the chilling effect on property values, these changes greatly hurt those in our community who commute to New York, and you have heard from many of those tonight and will in the future. You also propose cutting back off-peak trains to Penn to every hour rather than half hour. This was tried several years ago, but half hour service was restored quickly due to severe overcrowding and complaints from all Port Washington branch riders. 
Many people take off-peak service to the west side for a variety of reasons, including Broadway, Lincoln Center, Madison Square Garden, Port Authority, access to educational and medical institutions located on the west side. I question whether you've done enough market research regarding the demand for off-peak east side access to justify reducing the Penn Station access to hourly. These proposed changes are unacceptable to the thousands of people who live in Great Neck and work or visit the city. The schedules need to be fixed to actually improve service to our community rather than reduce it as you have done here. Thank you very much. Please make some changes. Good night. Thank you, Susan. Next, we're gonna have Anthony Marangiello followed by Barbara Parasco. Anthony, you're on mute. Oh, Hello, there you go. I'm sorry. My name is Anthony Marangello. I've been boarding the Port Washington branch at Manhasset for the past 25 plus years. The proposed Long Island Railroad express service reductions on the Port Washington branch are completely unacceptable. This will directly impact all of the riders boarding on stations between Great Neck and Port Washington and all of the riders boarding in Queens. If you eliminate the morning express trains, all passengers boarding west of Great Neck will have to shove onto overcrowded cars. Currently, passengers boarding the trains at Little Neck enter practically empty trains. This will no longer be the case if you eliminate the express trains originating in Port Washington. Your proposal will be detrimental to all riders on the entire Port Washington branch. The same can be said about evening commuters. All passengers on the entire Port Washington branch will try to board the same trains at Penn Station. Currently, Queens bound passengers board the local trains and Nassau bound passengers board the express trains. Please reconsider your draconian proposed express service reductions on the Port Washington branch. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we're gonna have Barbara Perasco followed by Michael Carroll. Good evening. My name is Barbara Parasco. I've been a resident of Manhasset since 1983. My husband and I chose Manhasset for the schools and commute, specifically that we could each catch an express train 26 minutes from Manhasset to Penn and back and be home at a reasonable time be home at a reasonable time because of the express train schedule. As an ex-CEO, I find it unconscionable that the MTA continues to publicly voice misleading information to the public regarding the level of train service, which is just a restoration of the pre-COVID schedule. This coupled with the complete elimination of the express train is a total degradation of service on this branch. I don't understand how you could say otherwise with a straight face. How is this better in any way? This impacts our property values, our quality of life drastically across all of our communities. And I don't see how ridership will even sustain on this branch if these changes go into effect. Stop the sugarcoating and focus on fixing this major issue facing the majority of riders on the Port Washington branch. Can someone from the Long Island Railroad give us a real update in earnest about where we stand with this? You've heard an overwhelming number of residents share extremely valid concerns about this disastrous schedule change. We want and deserve answers now. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Next, we're gonna have Michael Carroll followed by Kathleen Downs. Hi everybody, uh, 
Hi everybody, Michael Carroll, a Port Washington resident. Thank you, Nick um, and team for, for hosting. Um, I've been living in Port Washington for two years and, and commuting uh, into the city. Uh, um, one of the reasons, like many others on the call, we moved to this town was, you know, for the commute uh, before we started our young family. Um, so right now, as it stands, I see my kids probably about 30 minutes a day from Monday to Friday. Um, and with the new proposed schedule that I'll be lucky to see them, I think, probably once <clears throat> during that time period. So I'm just please, please are urging the NTA and all the officials associated with this to please reverse this decision and reconsider the proposal and the effects to the community. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Next, we're going to have Kathleen Downs, followed by Marios Michaelides. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Kathleen Downs, and I'm a resident of Floral Park. I have lived in Floral Park for my entire life. I am 29 years old. Um, as you can probably see, I'm a wheelchair user. I have a lifelong disability. And the Floral Park station just got an elevator, so I'm really just learning how to use the transit system. And I am very concerned as a person with a disability with the um, elimination of the direct trains to Atlantic Terminal. As you can imagine, getting on one train is quite difficult as a wheelchair user, um, seeing as we often have to wait for the ramp and we're lucky if someone notices us. Um, I'm concerned about the idea of needing to transfer at Jamaica every single time. I don't see it being practical time-wise for me to make a transfer because it's difficult enough to get one ramp and make the train on time. Um, I would encourage you to consider the impact that these changes are going to have on riders with disabilities who already struggle to use the transit system. You're making it harder, not easier. Um, Many of us don't have other forms of transportation. When you're a wheelchair user, you can't just get in a regular cab or a car with someone else. I am unable to drive and will be unable to drive for my entire life. So increasing access to the transit system is really important to me. Um, I would consider uh, encourage you to re-implement the direct trains to Atlantic Terminal from the LIRR. Uh, because that is one of the routes that I uh, would like to use often. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Next, we're going to have Mario, Mario Smicolides, followed by Lawrence Shire. Uh, hi, uh, uh, thanks for the time today. Uh, I myself just got off a very crowded PM commuter train um, from the city today, as I do almost every commuting day of the year. Uh, I take trains anywhere between five and seven o'clock, and they are all very crowded, um, standing room only in many cases. Um, the morning commutes are the same. Uh, by the time any of the express trains get to Great Neck, it's already standing room only. Uh, this is great concern with the new proposed schedule. Really, the only train in the morning that's viable for me will be a 7.45 to Penn Station, which gets in at 8.30. Um, you will then be compressing probably four or five trains into that one time for most individuals. Um, and, you know, uh, I'm a Port Washington resident. For everyone that thinks the express trains are going away, they're not. They're just moving to Bayside, really. Um, for example, Bayside from 7.04 to 8.24 will have nine trains in the morning which um, I just can't understand. Uh, I don't know why the MTA and LIRR is making an excuse for the train parking in Port Washington. If we can already accommodate the express trains that we have now, um, I, I think that's misleading. Um, I don't know where you're getting your ridership numbers from. I would caution any official numbers that you get. Um, I would say within the last month or so, they rarely check our tickets. And if they do, 
They do not scan our tickets on the phone. Um, I want this recorded. I want this looked into by the LIRR. Uh, I'm not a big conspiracy guy, but it, it just doesn't quite add up, to be honest with you. Um, so just, you know, the, the increase for, for Bayside and Woodside getting all these trains is very puzzling to me. You have a very loyal ridership from Port Washington to Great Neck. You heard, um, you heard our elected officials, 3,100 of us have filled out forms. That's 3,100 times $25 per day. Um, Queens residents, I do not think, are going to pay four and a half times what a subway ticket costs to take the LIRR. I, I just don't think that's going to happen. Um, and in many cases, they would have to take another subway once they got to Grand Central or Penn. So, um, you know, it, and not to mention the impact on families. You know, we, we could talk about eight minutes, eight minutes greater on the train, but if you have to take a train that's a half an hour earlier than you would have taken before, you know, it's just, it's eating up precious time with our families. And, uh, you know, I hope this was just an honest mistake. You hear us, you know, nonstop on these calls from the poor Washington line. Um, you know, I, I hope it was a, it was an oversight. I hope it, it gets it rectified. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Just again, a reminder, please try to keep your remarks to two minutes. Um, so next is Lauren Shire, followed by Jason Anthony. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Lawrence Shire. Port Washington is my destination. It's extremely urgent for the MTA to expand the Port Washington rail yard to accommodate the additional trains the MTA told North Hempstead town officials more than a decade ago that were uh, required before service to Grand Central could begin. A price will be paid by Long Island Railroad riders for every day this continues to be ignored, but some indispensable time can be recovered. And that's if the town of North Hempstead and MTA uh, act together in good faith now. Uh, the MTA has the legal capacity to enter into a friendly condemnation with the property owner, invest title immediately in the MTA. And this uh, can be done in return for payment of just compensation. The amount of that will be determined after an exchange of appraisals and valuation of the so-called damage parcels can be settled by the parties, or if they can't settle, it will be determined by a judge. What could be simpler and faster? If plans have been drawn up already, construction can begin. If not, then the MTA can use its new design build process to get the yard ready to receive trains and do so on a far faster schedule than the snail-like way the MTA had built anything at the beginning of the East Side Access Project. Now, what to do about the remaining uh, parking spaces? Um, well, the town officials should consider instituting dynamic pricing and uh, even adding a second level to the parking lot closest to the station. Uh, adding a couple of bells and whistles, anticipating electric vehicle usage will grow. Why not cover the parking lots with a canopy of solar cells that will not only help protect uh, uh, residents and their vehicles from the weather, but also uh, help uh, offset the cost of charging them. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And I uh, look forward to uh, this project and uh, having it fully built out and um, reaching its potential. Thank you. Next, we have Jason Anthony, followed by Laura Dermott. Good evening, everyone. Jason Anthony from Amazon Labor Union. Tonight, we have to denounce the Long Island privilege. And why is that? The poor Washington branch people, they think that uh, they're taking away their uh, express train service. But those people like myself and uh, Jason Wawinowitz that live here in Brooklyn, we don't have a direct service from Brooklyn to Long Island, like you guys have. 
on the this draft now. So again, like I said in the past meeting, for those who live along the Port Washington branch, stop complaining about this draft plan and adjust accordingly. Those like me and Jason well, Winovitz, we are losing the red service between Brooklyn and Long Island. What if something goes wrong between Jamaica and Manhattan? And Land Terminal Brooklyn will be vital because Atlanta Terminal Brooklyn has subway servers that connects not only to Penn, but to GCT as well via the four and five trains. Think about it. What if your train will be affected? Us here in Brooklyn will be your connection. That's all for this, for this meeting. Thank you. So next we're gonna have Laura Dermott followed by Charlton D'Souza. Hi, my name is Lori Dermott. I'm from Manhasset, obviously on the Port Washington line. So I'm really echoing what most of the other speakers have said relative to this line specifically. My husband and I uh, moved here and chose this location because of the line. We pay exorbitant taxes, um, which obviously are for the school and for the train line. Those are the, the highlights of living in this area as far as property values. Um, so there's obviously some concerns with changes made. During COVID, we understood and worked with you guys relative to the constant changing schedules. Uh, a lot of the commuters in Manhasset continuously maneuvered our own schedules around to accommodate all of the changes. The difference there being that we had options and with these proposed changes, we're not gonna have the same level of options. So really to mirror what everybody else is talking about, the increase of commuter time for us is a major concern. Um, even if you don't have children, your time is just as precious. And we spend a lot of time working and need to have, if we've learned anything from COVID, we need to have a little bit of work-life balance. And this is actually moving in the opposite direction of being able to support that. Um, obviously there's concerns about crowding that we've talked about already before. That is a constant issue as you get further uh, west towards the city in the morning and, and going the opposite direction in the evening. Um, that's really it. I'll yield the rest of my time. I'd like you to reconsider this schedule and uh, implement more of the, uh, the express trains. Thank you, Laura. So next we're gonna have Charlton D'Souza, followed by Young Peng, Young Peng Soon. Charlton, are you there? Okay. We are gonna move on to Young Peng Sun, followed by Marissa Godlin. Hello. Um, hi, everybody. So. Um, like many of the previous speakers, um, I have similar backgrounds. So I live in Great Neck. I'm a, a young parent. So I work in the city, so I commute to the city every day. And I specifically depend on uh, the express train. 
So I, I think I hope that you realize that the single fact that these open meetings are overwhelmed by angry and upset residents living along the uh, Port Washington line shall be enough evidence for you to uh, realize that how much negative impact you already uh, have uh, on the uh, proposed schedule on, on lives of uh, residents living in these four towns, Great Neck, Manhasset, uh, and Port Washington. So, um, so I'm a number guy and I calculated the, the time that will be increased uh, of this proposed uh, timetable. For Great Neck residents, by eliminating the uh, uh, express train, we are uh, expecting to increase our travel time 35% and 31% uh, for Manhasset uh, and 25% for Port Washington residents. So in fact, that uh, based on real, you know, real in-person experience, so many times the train will not arrive on time and we have to wait for a few minutes or if the train got delayed, so which makes the the uh, riding experience even worse. Uh, and the train during peak hours are very crowded already. So uh, making more stops in the middle of Queens will severely impact the riding experience, which will lead to uh, negative impact on property values. So I think a lot of people are making those points and I'm echoing them. And uh, from our perspective, this is definitely not an improvement, but a deteriorating uh, schedule and change. So I hope the management and MTA could reconsider uh, and change the proposed schedule and keep the same number of express trains from uh, our four towns to, to and from Manhattan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Young Ping. So next we're gonna have Marissa Gadlin followed by Charlton D'Souza. Hi, um, so I'm also a Great Neck resident. Um, I think there are a couple of things that I, I wanna uh, get to. One is that the express train service, like someone said before, wasn't eliminated. It was just moved to Bayside. So express train service definitely could be added back. There is the capacity. Um, we've also been hearing a lot about how much people spent on their homes. And I did the same thing. I moved to Great Neck for this. And I've spoken to other people who, you know, take the Long Island Railroad who aren't from my town. And the overwhelming consensus that they say is, well, it's about time that you guys don't have the best commute. And this does feel a little bit targeted. Like people were sick and tired of this line having such a great commute that they decided that, you know, might as well um, hurt them. And I drew up a little, I had asked if I could share this on screen, but I drew up a little thing showing where our commute has gone. Right now, if you wanna get in before 7.30, you can make a 6.27 or a 6.56 train. With the new schedule, you'll have to make a 6.25. So right now, if you make a 6.56, you'll have to make a train that's 21 minutes earlier. If you want to get in before 8 o'clock, you could take the 706 or the 730. You'll only be now able to make a 703 or 715. Those are the same two trains, the 703 or 715, that you'll have to make if right now you make a 747 or a 749 because you have to get in before 830. So if you're making a 749 train now to get into Penn Station before 830, you'll have to make a 715. If you want to get in before 9 a.m., right now you can make a 756 or an 817. Under the new schedule, you'll have to make a 755 train. So if you're making an 817 train to get into Penn Station before 9 o'clock, now you have to make a 755. So these are not just the express train issues. This is just an issue with the schedule in general, where you're going to be packing two to four trains onto one train going forward, and people are going to have to make trains that are earlier by 25 to 31 minutes. Okay, thank you, Marissa. So next we're gonna have Charlton D'Souza followed by Jeff Linder. Can you hear me now? Good evening. Um, so yeah. this is Charlton D'Souza from Passengers United. And I just wanted to say that I feel uh, you know, very uh, sad that the Port Washington branch is not getting enough service. 
Uh, everyone should be treated equally. And I think what y'all should do is give them like three or four more trains an hour, you know, and then get rid of the train at Great Neck so that everyone benefits, you know. I mean, you might have to pick up some people in Queens, but you're getting more train service at least, you know, instead of what they have now, which is three or four trains. And then with the Atlantic branch, uh, you know, from Brooklyn to Jamaica, you guys need to add, you'll need to turn that into like a subway where you just swipe your Metro card and everyone coming from Long Island should just be put, that should just be zone three. So, you know, instead of spending like so much of money uh, as, as you're going to Penn Station or Grand Central, you know, it would just be the fare paid to Jamaica. So basically Atlantic Terminal would be in zone three. That's what they should do. So like this, everyone's happy. And maybe it should just be like a shuttle train. I know that sounds crazy to everyone, but it's going to benefit the large majority of people going to Grand Central and Penn Station, where the bulk of the service is. And that would be for peak hours. Now, off peak hours, yes, there's an opportunity to add some trains to Atlantic Terminal, you know, going to Hampstead or going to like Babylon and stuff like that. And the flyers throughout the Long Island Railroad system need to be looked at because there's too many flyers. And a lot of these flyers are running empty with not a lot of people. So the goal is you want to fill the seats up and you want to keep it not too crowded. So like this, everyone gets something. It's not everything everyone wanted. Like Queens Village, we're not getting enough service. So we need more service in Queens Village and Hollis. And, you know, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Charlton. So next we're gonna have Jeff Linder followed by Chris Greif. Okay, I hope I am uh, unmuted. Yeah, I hope you're good. Okay, great. I, I, a lot of people have said a lot of wonderful things. I agree with so much. I'm sure you guys have all been hearing how upset everyone is by the cut in service and the elimination of, of express trains, which is just absolutely, of course, we're all like, are you, are you serious? Uh, somebody somebody um, um, actually said that they're a numbers guy. I'm not a numbers guy. I am a words guy. And I want to put this into perspective for you people who will listen to words. This is punishment. Punishment for the Port Washington branch customers. Why? Why is the railroad punishing Great Nick, uh, Manhasset, Plain Dome and Port Washington customers? It makes no sense. It just absolutely makes no sense. I've been commuting on the railroad since 1980 from Great Nick and um, the service has been wonderful. The other thing I wanna talk about, and a couple of people have brought it up. I just wanna make it clear, sorry, I have some notes here to, to the management that no rush hour express trains to and from Great Neck and, and be a Penn Station and Grand Central. This will directly affect the value of my home. Here's why, it will make Great Neck less attractive for those who commute to Manhattan. They will look elsewhere for quick service to and from Manhattan. My house will no longer have the allure of a 24 minute ride to Manhattan, therefore, the value of my house, the main biggest single investment I've ever made in my life will go down in value. There's no more profound way the Long Island Railroad can have a more negative effect on me, my family, and our lives. Please restore the express train service to Manhattan at the same level the railroad provides right now in the new schedules. Thank you. Thank you. So now we're going to have Chris Greif, followed by Alex Afanador. Chris, you're muted. Yep, there you go. Well, of course I'm muted. I have to come on. It gives me at least a minute. Good evening. And hi, everyone. Hi, Kathy. Uh, as I will say today, I'm here as, as a person with a person with a disability. I want to remind that, you know, we, you know, I heard everyone spoke and I want to thank some people who did mention about accessibility, but we got to remember one thing. Atlantic, turn, Atlantic branch line is in very important line as well, as well as Paul Washington and all the lines. We need to make sure that everyone's got to remember, we have Long Island Cares for a reason. We need to remind everyone that's where they're there for. 
That's number one. And they're fantastic because I can bounce that all around. But we also got to remember that accessibility for seniors and people with disabilities who do use the trains need to remember they're there as well. So Long Island Railroad, I thank you with the bottom of my heart that you guys have been doing this. But passengers and elected officials, remember, you have seniors, you have people with disabilities and the veterans that uses these trains. Let's remember that, please, and show the respect that these are drafts. We need to remind that we need to make sure these trains are running, especially into Brooklyn. And I agree with everyone saying that we need express service, we need local service, but we need to balance the schedule. So please, let's try to keep the balance and the strength of the schedules. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you, Chris. So next we're gonna have Alex Afanador followed by Deborah Greif. Hello? You're on, you're good. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to state that I'm happy for the new East Side access line. Um, my only concern is that the new east side access claims to provide fewer large gaps in service however off the bat this does not hold true under the new timetable as an example on the babylon line there is a 44 minute gap between 3 38 and 4 22 p.m that runs to towns such as Copeg and lindenhurst before going to babylon under the current timetable at max there is a 25 minute gap during this same time all this is between 3 and 8 p.m travel window nobody should be subjected to a 44 minute gap on any line whether it's port washington whether it's babylon whether it's ronkonkoma ironically there is a 410 train between this gap but it only stops on amityville before copig and lindenhurst this currently does not happen under the current timetable simple solution here is to extend this train to Colpig and Lindenhurst, two communities whose downtowns are on the rise. And lastly, train servicing Colpig and Lindenhurst will have a train arriving, a train arriving at an average of 33 minutes between the times of 4 and 6 p.m. under this new timetable. On the old timetable, it's an average of 19 minutes. This is a 14-minute increase in between trains that are servicing this station. Again, how is this benefit? How is this new timetable benefiting anybody? And may I add, this is with one more extra train being added as well. It simply does not make any logical sense. I encourage the MTA and the Long Island Railroad to look at this timetable and fix what needs to be fixed. Nobody is happy, and you've heard the complaints and the cries from everybody. Please learn from past mistakes, current mistakes, and let's get a better service for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. So next we're gonna have Deborah Gray followed by uh, D Ring. Deborah, you're muted. Sorry. Oh, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Good evening. My name is Deborah Greif. I'm a person, I'm a senior and a person with disabilities. First, I want to thank Long Island Railroad for doing having Long Island Cares. It's been a godsend because now I don't have to worry about falling through the gap. And it also makes it sure that I'm safe and I don't re, re break my foot again. I would like that I am make sure please have it at when you get into grand central please have long island cares in fact start metro north care so you guys can teach them the right way please maintain the services between atlantic avenue to jamaica it makes it a lot easier when we have to commute if i have to get to certain places where it's in queens it goes a lot faster if i can use the long island railroad because it's 20 minutes I do understand everybody else's concerns, but I'm also disappointed that nobody see very few people spoke, but I'm a little disappointed that the elected official, she's not worried about accessibility for her consumers and customers who live out there. 
you do have, you'd be surprised how many people with disabilities who live out in, in Port Washington and all those towns. And yet, do you worry about them getting on and off the train safely? They do want to work and they want to get to work if they are in Manhattan. So think about that too. Again, thank you very much. I'm done. Thank you, Deborah. Okay, so next we're gonna have D-Ring followed by Otis Komarau. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, um, the MTA and Long Island Road for all the hard work that you guys have done. Um, it is great that they are opening up Grand Central. Um, and I like to echo a lot of the complaints that everyone has been having about the new proposed schedule. I take the uh, Farakaway branch line. And as it was before the pandemic, we had great service. We had a, a lot of direct trains and everything ran smooth. However, since the pandemic, um, and now all the ridership and everyone's coming back and we're promoting working back in the office and back in the city. Um, I've complained several times and everyone is all falling on deaf ears. We need more direct trains from Penn Station along the Farakaway line. Now with this new proposed um, <clears throat> schedule that's coming up through Grand Central, the only thing that was done is not adding any more direct trains line to the city and back from Penn Station, it is just splitting them. So essentially in Grand Central in, to Penn Station, we will be having half the amount of trains that we currently now going directly um, from on the Frackaway line. I implore you to listen to the people who have even spoken before me and the people who will be talking after me. Whoever put this schedule together, I don't know how much thought was actually put in to what we, the riders, actually really need. We need more trains, not splitting the trains between half between Penn Station and half between Grand Central. We need more direct trains to each location. On the Frackway line, we don't we have now coming from Penn Station on the return home in the evening on the rush hour, only two direct trains. Before the pandemic, we have we had many more. Now with the new proposed schedule, there'll be even less, probably split between one and one. This is unacceptable. I implore you to please add more direct trains in the peak rush hour to, to the city and as well on the return home. Thank you so much. Thank you, D. So now we're going to have Otis Komarau followed by Chris Polacronis. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I can't see me, but. Um, my name is Otis Comero. I'm a resident of Port Washington. Um, I had practiced and prepared to, you know, get on here and be all mad for the reasons that many people mentioned. I have young children and I want to spend time with them. We bought our house a year ago in reliance on these, you know, direct trains, which are now going to be gone. Trains have been there for a hundred years. You know, I was ready to get in this call and be all mad. Um, but everyone has done that for me. <laughs> so I don't want to get in the call and be mad. I just want to turn down the temperature. Um, and, you know, things happen. I mean, this is a draft, a draft proposal. Um, I think you can see from the reaction that you're getting from the Port Washington line that we're not particularly happy with this draft proposal. Um, but again, it's a draft proposal. It means it's not a final one. And I know it's hard to sit there and, and listen to person after person after person complain and, and be mad and be upset and be unhappy. Um, and, you know, it's a human reaction to react negatively to that type of thing. If I were in, you know, your folks' position, I could entirely understand a, you know, a screw you, Port Washington attitude. I mean, that wouldn't be a good thing, but that's human reaction. So I'm, I, you know, the purpose of, of my comment is just to ask everyone not to do that. <laughs> just to ask everyone to just turn the temperature down. Let's sit down, figure this out. I have never once participated in a public event like this. Um, this is the first evening I haven't spent with my kids, and I can't remember when. But this issue was so important to me that I tuned in. Um, to make this point. And I'm just hoping that people can put their egos aside on, you know, from our elected officials to you folks, everyone can just sit down. I have no idea how that process works, um, but I just encourage people to find a solution because 
we've had express service in this train for a hundred years. Um, it would be incredibly sad to see it end now. I, I don't think that's necessary. I, I just would really implore everyone to just calm down and work together and figure this out. And I really thank you for um, your time today and I hope we can work together towards a solution. Thank you. Thank you, Otis. So next we're gonna have Chris Polychronis followed by Stephanie Krugman. Chris, you're on. Chris, are you there? Okay, we can hear okay. you now. Hi there, just popped on. Yep, great. Uh, Hi there, my name is Chris Paul Cronus. I live in Flower Hill and commute from the Port Washington line uh, and stop several days a week. Uh, appreciate you hosting this forum. I really hope it's not for theater. I hope it's actually used to listen to your loyal writers. Um, since moving here in 2014, service has certainly not increased, but my fares have increased and everybody's fares have increased. So, um, you know, you tout this transformative project. Um, and you know your hopes are that we should be happy um it's tough to trust the process it's tough to trust um that this is a draft proposal and not just the sorry we tried this is your proposal um you know since we've heard you know this was supposed to be opened in by 2009 and it's 2022 um you know i've heard that they're bringing back the 1980s trains because the new trains aren't ready you know, in this day and age, in this modern society, in you know the metropolitan area of New York, um, we just need to do better. Um, you know, and not be. Uh, there's just numbers that keep getting thrown around that are supposed to make everybody happy about growth in service, growth in 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 options, and an option to Grand Central and an option to Penn Station is not a growth in options when you're coming home. You can't just magically go from Oops, I missed the train at Penn Station. Let me blink and get to Grand Central in, in five minutes. It just doesn't work that way. Um, you know, the old 736 train from Port Washington was 35 minutes. Uh, that's now going to be a local train that takes 45 minutes. That's 10 minutes each way, 20 minutes a day on, let's not forget, people then get into the city and then have to go somewhere else. I have to go downtown. That's an extra 20 minutes if I'm lucky, if the two, three train works, that doesn't always happen. Almost miss my train by 30 seconds. If I miss a train now, it's, you know, another 10 minutes. If I miss my train in this draft schedule, I'm waiting in Penn Station for 35 minutes. I think the comment was, we want to make uh, Penn Station less crowded. It is less crowded. It is unsafe unseen, and, and, and dirty right now. So who wants to go there? Um, listen, I just appreciate the forum. I hope that this is a draft schedule. Um, Ms. Rinaldi, I hope you hear, you know, the passionate uh, residents of Port Washington and Hassett, Great Neck, who are losing express trains and have less time with their families. Thank you. Okay. Next round, Stephanie Krugman, followed by Mark Miller. Good evening, and thank you for this, this opportunity to share uh, my thoughts on what is a very serious situation. I'm a New York City school teacher. That means I'm a civil servant. I've been commuting from Great Neck for the last nine years. I have two young children. I'm a single parent. Teachers must be in school before 7.45 each morning. I currently leave my house at 6.30 to be on time for school for my kindergarten students. If the express trains are taken away from Port, Manhasset, and Great Neck, other civil servants like myself will be leaving our young families in the care of others. Every minute that I am not with my children, they're not with any parent. 
It is solely on me and caregivers. Finding someone to come to stay with my children at 6.30 in the morning has proven very difficult. With the new train schedule, the, with the proposed new train schedule, I will have to leave my home by 6 a.m. in order to make 6.15 a.m. train. That is nearly impossible. My children cannot be alone. I would hope that an organization like the Long Island Railroad and the MTA would consider other civil servants and the needs that we as essential workers must deliver and maintain and carry. This is not a joke. This is expensive. This is terrifying. A change train schedule will literally decimate my life and make my children's life that much harder. Please consider strongly the significance of leaving this 100 year reputation strongly intact and better than before. I've grown up in Great Neck. I've chosen to remain here with my young family. It is unacceptable to put this stress from a 28 minute train ride when every minute counts to then expand that to over an hour plus getting across town. Penn Station and Great Neck. Great Neck is why I chose to live here. I walk to the train station. I urge you to please strongly reconsider any motion other than stopping and retaining the train schedule as it is with all the express trains intact. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, we're gonna have Mark Miller. And after Mark, uh, of the registered attendees uh, to register to speak, we, we actually have no one left, at least that we think. So if you haven't had a chance to speak and you register or you wanna speak, uh, please just let us know in the, uh, the chat function and we'll call on you, okay? Thank you. So uh, Mark, take it away. Okay, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak and I appreciate your uh, having these open hearings. Uh, Mark Miller, resident of Port Washington, uh, but I speak to you in a different capacity. Uh, I'm also CEO of a company uh, based in New York City that employs uh, 550 people. We recently moved our headquarters four months ago uh, from uh, further away from Penn Station to be directly across from Penn Station, where uh, 11 Penn Plaza. And we did this because I am having uh, incredible difficulty getting employees to want to come back to work. Uh, and I'm in a war for talent, frankly, uh, with competitors who are willing to let their employees work from home. My interests are aligned with the MTAs. I want to see riders on the Long Island Railroad coming into the city and working in the city. And I will tell you, uh, the single biggest train line that is utilized by 550 employees is the Port Washington branch of the LIRR. So um, given those factors, uh, I think you are putting at great risk uh, a very important constituency, the Port Washington uh, ridership, who I've been told straight to my face uh, would not come into work and would choose not to come into work uh, if these changes were made to the express schedule for all the reasons that you've heard here. Uh, so I ask you to please consider that. I also ask you to consider um, my understanding uh, from the limited information that's leaked out uh, is that the constraint may be uh, one at the Port Washington at the end of the line, the depot, and just having enough storage area for uh, additional trains. Uh, and it seems like there's a workable solution if you were to annex some of that parking lot. That seems to be a very elegant way uh, to meet the needs of your ridership. Uh, and hopefully uh, there would be a return on investment by the MTA uh, just by keeping your ridership levels on that line. Uh, last quick point, I came off the 544 Express train today. Uh, it's a Met game night. Uh, train was wall to wall, uh, standing room only. And as such, I shudder to think with a reduction in service, uh, what those trains might be like in the future. Thank you again for taking the time to listen. Thank you, Mark. Um, so next we're gonna have Jordan Lowe. And again, if you want to speak, you know, now's your chance. Please let us know in the, in the chat function. Thank you.
Jordan, are you on? Okay. Well, don't think you're on anymore. Well, um, is if there's anyone else I would like to speak, um, you know, we'll give it another minute or two. Otherwise, I think we'll uh, we'll conclude this meeting. So I'm just going to wait another minute or two. Please let us know um, if you'd like to speak. You know, again, the Q and A function, chat function, whatever. Just use that, and uh, yeah, I'll just give it another minute or two. Okay, I have uh, one um, one speaker who's Mindy Lee. So Mindy, feel free to uh, get connected. And if anyone else would like to speak, please uh, let us know. Thank you. Wait, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. I sorry. I thought I was muted. Um, so um, thanks for uh, letting me speak at the last minute. Um, my name is Mindy Lee. I live in Port Washington. Um, like many of the people who spoke here, I joined. Uh, I, I moved to Port Washington because, and one of the big factors was the fact that it had this wonderful train line with, uh, uh, you know. A nice commute because you know I work long hours in the city. I also work downtown, so you know um, it was critical for me to have a, a reasonable commute time. Um, I think that you know since the I think everyone's joint goal is to have more people go to the city to work. Right? We, we hear all these stories about how New York City needs more people to come in to work and to go to the offices. In addition, I think believe the MTA would like to increase their ridership. That's why they're trying to offer these. Um, you know, new, uh, you know, wonderful things like like Grand Central. But I think you're going to have the, the opposite effect here, right? I, I mean, I, I know I personally, if this was going to affect, I will ride the Long Island Railroad even less. I mean, and yes, I, it's, it's great. That I have the option to work remotely at times, and you know, but I will exercise the option and ride the MTA less because why would I subject myself to this horrible schedule? You know, I mean, like, you know, it's just, and, but the, I'm really worried about what it does for the community, right? Because, you know, the, a lot of people move here, a lot of wonderful people move here because, and we have a great community because, and because it draws a lot of people. And it's really, you know, something that we're, you know, very worried about how it impacts us. Um, I will say this, if you um, would consider even removing Grand Central from our schedule and going back to our old schedule, I think that's actually preferable. And I speak this as a person who works one block from Grand Central. I would rather have you go back to the old schedule and take Grand Central off your schedule than to impose this kind of, you know, crazy schedule on on the commuters. So, um, so that's a suggestion about what you, what we can do to to get people back their, you know, reasonable commute times. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mindy. Okay, so then we have Amanda Postel. So. You please feel free to connect. Um, and then, yeah, please, if anyone else would like to speak, please let us know in the, uh, the Q&A function. Thank you. And you're on mute as an FYI. Here you go. Thank Still. you. Yep. I just want 
I just want to echo the sentiments of the New York City school teachers. Um, we don't have the work from home option. We are in the city every single day and again, have to be in the city before the 8 a.m. time period, which really gives us very limited options. I'm talking about the Port Washington line, of course, and echoing all the sentiments that came up today. I also just want to quickly mention that while it is um, mandatory to wear a mask on the train, very few people are still wearing masks. And while it is a personal choice, I guess, increased ridership at, you know, um, with the cut of the trains will increase exposure. And those of us with really little kids at home or immunocompromised people living in our house or elderly around us will be subjected to these viruses and just continue to bring them home. Um, again, because not everyone is wearing a mask at this time. So I just want to bring up those two concerns. Very little concern for those of us who are in every day as civil servants working for the New York City public school system, as there's no train that allows us to get to work on time unless we leave at the crack of dawn and, um, you know, the con continued exposure to uh, the COVID-19. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Amanda. Okay. Um, at this time, I don't, I don't see anyone else in the Q&A, so... This is your last chance, at least for this meeting. Uh, oh, I think we got someone. Okay, so Steve Weinberg, the mayor of Thomaston. Why don't you come on, Steve? Am I unmuted now? You're good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, and thank you for the additional time to comment. I wanted to reiterate, uh, one, the pocket track was extended in Thomaston in order to accommodate additional train storage, which should be utilized in terms of increased keeping express service and increasing local service to Queens. So the pocket track in Great Neck should be utilized to actually improve service while we wait for an expanded yard in Port Washington. And I'd like to echo what the school teachers, the professionals, everyone that works in New York City has already stated, and someone so eloquently stated before, doing the numbers analysis as to what trains were available to arrive at work on time at either 7.30, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. I'd like to extend that. The same goes for commuting to 9.30. Professionals such as attorneys, in order to get to work on time, will have to leave at least a half hour earlier than their current commuting time or be on a very crowded train and not make their 930 court call. So again, other professionals, doctors, in this case, attorneys going to court, are gonna be adversely impacted by the schedule in Port Washington. You've heard the comments from everyone. You've heard the, on the Port Washington line. At what point, and, and an additional proposed schedule has been submitted to the LIRR that would address or alleviate these concerns. At what point can all of our Great Neck, Manhasset, Flandome, Port Washington, North Shore residents who, who Roslyn, who utilize the Port Washington line, when will they hear from the LIRR about these concerns and how they'll be addressed and changed in the proposed schedule. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I don't have anyone else right now who's asked to speak. So I think at this point, it's probably best to conclude and I'll I'll stop myself if I see anything, but um, or anyone who's interested. But yeah, uh, you know, thank you to everyone who came, who came out tonight. Um, you know, we really appreciate it. All this feedback is very important for us. Um, you know, these are draft schedules, so please keep that in mind. Uh, we do have another meeting coming up on it's one week from now, so it's Thursday the eleventh. Also, once again at six p.m. The, uh, the registration for that is, is open. So if you go to the project page, which I shared earlier, um, you can register there and I'll just turn it over to Kathy for her closing remarks. 
Yeah, I just want to repeat what you just said, Nick. Thank you all for spending some time with us and sharing your concerns about the schedule. They are draft schedules, and uh, we really appreciate your input and your thoughts in terms of uh, the changes that you'd like to see made. So thank you all very much, and, and have, a, have a good day. Great. Thank you. Take care, everyone.